and assalamu alaikum i am dr aisha bashiruddin an educationist researcher and writer in the last presentation video i presented the research aims questions and the significance of the research study titled i am a muslim woman in america a narrative in this video i will present the research design participants and the processes of data analysis so stay tuned remember to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon and let's begin this research study aims to explore the formation and negotiation of identity of muslim women in america i have used narrative inquiry to generate and analyze the various nuances of negotiations of muslim women identity as they emerge in their narratives overall the research is rooted in the theoretical framework which is based on three interrelated philosophical underpinnings which are identity theory identity formation and negotiation and identity and narrative it looks deep into personal ethnic social and religious aspects of identity and how they influence the formation and negotiation of identity this research study aims at looking at the construction and negotiation of identity of muslim women in america as discussed earlier and their relationship to narrative inquiry this perspective is based on the premise that each of us constructs and reconstructs our identity as we go about living our lives within our contexts and time our stories to live by are the ways in which we come to know who and how we live in our worlds these stories are narrative constructions which develop and change over time according to clandenin 2013 clandenin and connelly 2000 they are are lived experiences on different landscapes people living out these stories have multiple experiences which enrich their identity and they reshape and take new shapes in new settings however this is not to deny according to them that identities both are deeply rooted in who we are and also keeps on changing as life unfolds here i will discuss how narrative inquiry was used to study the identity formation and negotiation of identity of muslim women of four different generations in america i will also describe the sampling and research location criteria used for the selection of muslim women in miami south florida and other parts of america data collection method analysis and representation of data i will also present the demographical information that is their age and ethnicity of the 50 muslim women chosen for the study in narrative inquiry muslim women from different backgrounds and different generations were at the central position in the research the quality of relationship with the muslim women was given due importance as it influences the quality of information shared at this stage i relied on several data collection tools i was particularly interested in the way the muslim women portray themselves and how they construct and negotiate their identity i used my reflective diary oral life history interviews and semi structured interviews as data generation tools 
Research Design and Methodology. This study investigated the question, how do Muslim women of different generations in America construct and negotiate their identity? To address this question, an in-depth understanding of the American Muslim women identity construction and negotiation from their perspective is required. Thus, a narrative inquiry is a well-suited methodology for this study with its possibilities to gather rich data of personal experiences of the participants. There are several reasons for employing narrative inquiry, which I discuss here. Narrative inquiry is a form of qualitative research that requires the researcher to gather narratives or stories and subsequently offer the participants an opportunity to voice their lived experiences, according to Clandenin, Kane, Lessard, and Hoover, 2016. Narrative inquiry is based on the premise that we as human beings come to know about our lives through story, according to Andrews and Thimberco, 2013. Storytelling is deemed to play a vital role in the lives of humans. It helps them to describe and make meaning of their experiences through the stories that they share. Thus, narrative inquiry provides a methodology that helps the researchers to make meaning of the stories that participants tell about their life experiences. As such, narrative inquiry is much more than just listening to stories. It involves trying to understand what is the interpretation of the lived experiences of the participants. Narrative inquiry is a way to understand experience and a way to study experience, according to Clandenin 2013, Clandenin and Connolly 2000. It is a methodology which can engage all four generations of participants of the study through storytelling and making meaning of the stories situated in different times. Another important component of narrative inquiry is its relation between temporality, sociality, and spatiality. As such, according to Clandon in 2013, the participants apply the storylines of past, present, and future, inner and outer experiences, and place. While all these dimensions were present in all narratives, one may be more predominant than the others. In my research, the story of the past and present appears to be more prominent than the story of the future. The narrative inquiry has an invitational quality because people generally like to read and tell stories. It is based on the assertion that experience of individual is represented by the stories they tell and that these stories are entrenched within cultural, social, institutional, familial, political, and linguistic narratives, according to Landonin, Kane, and Lazar, 2018. The narratives provide structure and order to the experiences of the individuals. By using narrative inquiry, I was able to understand the intricate and sensitive issues of Muslim women identity construction and negotiation by inviting them to tell stories of their experiences. Through oral life history interview and semi-structure interviews, 
coupled with informal conversations, enabled me to collect data regarding their personal and social experiences that shaped up their self over the period of their life. Similarly, it helped in interpreting the data collected through narratives. Above all, in this method, Muslim women voices are placed at the center of the whole research process. Narrative inquiry works on two dimensions in educational research, as a phenomenon and as a method. The former refers to the structured qualities of experience to be studied and later to the patterns to the inquiry for the study. This kind of research emphasizes the importance of spending time with the research participants to know their lives, which requires detailed description and telling and retelling. Narrative inquiry as a methodology places relational ethics at the heart of it. The relationship between the researcher and the research is of immense importance in narrative inquiry. Hence, relational ethics inform the negotiation of re research relationships. Relational ethics focuses on two dimensions. One, it is important to forge a trusting relationship between the participants and the researcher which greatly influences the quality of the information shared in narrative research. Two, these relations are interwoven with dimensions of inquiry into temporality, sociality, and spatiality. As a researcher, I followed the ethical attitude in narrative inquiry through which it is extremely important to mutually construct research relationship, which emphasizes the kind of relationship in which the participant and the researcher feels cared for and have a voice with which to tell their stories. Forming this kind of trusting relationship and conducting this kind of research takes time. I, as a narrative inquirer, was also a participant of the study. I regularly wrote field notes and reflective journal. The main location of the research is Miami, Florida, because I, as a researcher, am living here. I met many Muslim women in the local masjid. So I decided to use convenient yet, yet purposive sampling. Later, I also used snowball sampling. I tried also to contact Muslim women in other parts of America. I included Muslim women from different ethnic backgrounds, such as Pakistanis, African, Arabs, Hispanic, and those from the Caribbean islands. I also included myself as a research participant because during the data collection, I kept a reflective diary to document my identity as a Muslim woman in America as it emerged in their stories. In this way, it provided some grounds for shared understanding with the women that I interviewed. Some of them had deep resonance with my identity construction, while others were vastly different. I have added my reflective entries throughout the representation of data as they show significance to the complexities of my identity. We, that is me and participants, co-constructed our identities as Muslim women. I have used the word I to represent my voice. 
In some excerpts from the stories of the women, I have used their words in which they have used I. In this way, I have tried to bring the readers closer to both of us. Here you can see that each ethnic group is represented by 10 women. Research Participants Sample and Sampling Procedure For the study, I selected 50 research participants. The criteria for selecting participants included that they should be living in America for at least last 10 years so that they can give an in-depth understanding of their perceptions of identity. Secondly, they should belong to different ethnic groups. Third, they should belong to one of the four generations mentioned above. Four, they should be able to communicate in English or Urdu, which is a national language of Pakistan. Five, they should be interested in the study and are ready to share their perceptions of constructing and negotiating their Muslim identity. Six, they understand that to protect confidentiality and anonymity, pseudonyms will be used. Based on the concepts of narrative inquiry, I used analysis and representation of the data. Stoffer 2020 summarizes that in the composing of field text, the participants and the researcher together may generate data in various forms while they gradually move between field texts to interim texts and research texts. They are all interpretations of experience. Research texts include the voices of both participants and the researcher as the inquiry and the process are part of the experience of both. The entire process is not linear, but rather involves checking back and forth between the field writing, field texts, and research texts. Using narrative inquiry, the study generated data through oral life history interviews, semi-structured interviews, and my reflective notes. I employed all these ways of data collection in order to create a rich, diverse field text from multiple sources from which I could write a research text. After analysis and various interpretations, I used thematic analysis for the narratives. In thematic analysis, the data is analyzed by theme and repeated patterns of meanings from experiences are identified. The purpose of analyzing the data is not to find the right answers, but to eliminate the puzzles in the situation. As a narrative inquirer, writing a research text, I use the research questions as a guiding framework to look for emerging patterns, narrative threads, tensions, and themes either within or across Muslim women perceptions and experiences in the social context. I present the analysis of the Muslim women stories and theorize the concepts of identity from personal, ethnic, social, and religious dimensions. Themes are presented as they emerged from the data. I present my understanding of the meaning that the participants make and vignettes 
from the interviews to represent the voices of the participants. I also include analysis of my reflective journal to understand my identity as a Muslim woman, to incorporate my voice as a researcher and participant of the research study I have interwoven my stories too and illustrated them by sharing excerpts from my reflective journal. Thank you for joining and thank you for your comments. See you next week, that is on January 28th, 2023. Take good care of yourself. Until then, goodbye and Allah Hafiz.